members, there's a vote going on. At some point, I'll determine whether we recess or uh, we can power through. So, Senator Merkley. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman and Deputy Secretary Sherman. Back in 1797, John Adams was in the situation of observing that the French were seizing U.S. commercial ships. So he requested to Congress authorization to respond, and Congress didn't respond. So he requested it again in 1798, and in May of that year, Congress did give him authorization, and then he deployed U.S. ships to protect our commercial ships, our Navy ships. In 1801, uh, Thomas Jefferson was president, and the Bay, that's B-E-Y, of Tripoli. The ruler of Tripoli was seizing U.S. commercial ships in the Mediterranean. And so Thomas Jefferson asked Congress for authorization to respond. And uh, a few weeks later, uh, Congress did in 1802. So and from, he, he made the request in December of 1801, and uh, in February 1802, Congress gave that authorization. In 1815, President Madison had the situation where the Regency of Algeria was seizing U.S. ships in the Mediterranean. And so he sent a message uh, to Congress and asked for a declaration of war. And in March, the following month, Congress rejected the request for declaration of war, but passed in legislation authorizing responding. Why did these three presidents not simply assert Article II powers? and proceed to deploy U.S. ships, naval ships, to protect our commercial ships? Senator, my guess is you know the answer to that better than I do. Uh, I don't know the history here uh, that you're citing, uh, so I'm not sure why they did not assert Article II. Well, I'm happy to, to help with this little history lesson. Thank you. Uh, because the answer is that when our founders wrote our Constitution, they were very, very concerned about the use of the power of war. And so they delegated that not to the president, but to Congress. And our early presidents took that extremely seriously. If we fast forward to the Vietnam era, we have the conduct of hostilities under President Kennedy, President Johnson, President Nixon, without an authorization, which led to the 1973 War Powers Act, where Congress said, stop. This is a complete violation, and we need to re-seize the, the vision of our Constitution in which Congress has to provide authorization as envisioned in our Constitution, as envisioned by our early, and acted on by our early, early presidents. However, it's proved extremely difficult to, to maintain that vision. And the argument our founders made was that the impact of the of essentially conducting war or actions of war is so significant that it should be entrusted to no one person. But Article II, as now interpreted, asserts the opposite, that one person can make these, these decisions. And we would think that the uh, Supreme Court would play a role here in deciding where is that balance between the constitutional vision and the current actions. But the court has bailed on, on these questions, leaving us to wrestle with this as we are at this hearing. So here we are debating this question of when will the president ask for authorization or how will the president reinterpret existing authorization and how does that fit with our constitutional division of powers? I've been extremely struck that the 2001 authorization for the use of military force did not contain the words and associated forces. And yet, time after time after time, the justification for using the 2001 authorization in various parts of the world has been because the administration, various administrations, assert we are going to add the words and associated forces, which means there's no limit in time, no limit in geography, and no limit in terms of the direct involvement that was written in the 2001 authorization, where it said it was specifically about groups that planned, authorized, committed, or aided the terrorist attacks on a specific date of September 11, 2001. So now we have the situation where 
new, new areas around the world, new involvement of groups we don't like, we employ forces against, and we justify it under the 2001 AUMF in part, or under Article 2, but the list of groups and individuals the executive branch considers covered by the 2001 AUMF is secret. So I ask you this, did Congress intend for the 2001 AUMF to authorize secret wars? Certainly, uh, Senator, uh, AUMFs, in my understanding, is for us to have a transparent relationship about the threats that we are trying to address. And the Biden-Harris administration, as we have said today, is very open and already in discussions with this committee and with the Senate to revise the 2001 AUMF to be narrow, specific framework uh, that would resolve some of the concerns that you are raising. If we were to create that specific framework in a legislative process, we would have to essentially list the places in the world that we're authorizing. Those places are currently secret in terms of the additional information or authorizations that have been interpreted and added. Is there a reason then not to make those locations, those situations public here in the United States of America? My understanding, and I'll defer to my uh, legal counsel here, is that we, uh, are obligated to report to Congress what we are doing and that there are no secrets. Rich? Yes, Senator, we have a, we report regularly under the War Powers Resolution and under the uh, National Yes, my Act. question was about public disclosure, not reporting to, to Congress. I think uh, you're probably referencing, I, I believe, perhaps. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. you speak up I'm, a little bit. I'm sorry, Senator. Um, my understanding that certain uh, certain groups may have been classified uh, to uh, for national security reasons, but uh, you know other information is is uh, publicly available. And I don't know if my colleague. It's not may not may have been. They have been. And my point is, if Congress is going to have a discussion over tailoring such a new AUMF, it becomes a public discussion. And I, I guess I'm asking this: Will the administration consider? making public all the locations where they now ha have granted themselves authorization to conduct military strikes? We are open to having that discussion with you, Senator, but uh, to back up what my uh, legal advisor colleague has said, uh, there are situations where it may be in the interest of our national security uh, for those reports to come to Congress in a classified setting. Thank you, Senator Booker. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. 